Hi there, Doc here with some talk about time and energy management for you. So I'm saying time and energy management because if you did my how many hours do you have in a week activity, so if you have 168 hours a week, you've probably found out that you actually have more time than you think most of the time, but you're not always using it the most effectively to get things done. And part of that is because you also need to manage how functionally you work, which is your energy. Now there's lots of information out there, so much on time and energy management strategies. And I'm mostly taking things that exist in other places, but they're sort of my conglomeration of best tips so far. And I will reference a few of these other places if you're looking for more useful information. For example, if you want a significant breakdown of different kinds of energy management, uh, Will Curb of, uh, Hack your, Hacking Your ADHD, which is a podcast, has been doing a series on it, and it's just fantastic. Um, but let's move on and talk a little bit about my best tips. Okay, so tips for time management. First of all, you got a plan to have a plan, and it feels like you're going to eat time out of your time to make a plan, but I promise you will save it. Even if you're, and it doesn't matter what your plan is, it's gonna change for different people. Some people want a plan where they put it on a schedule and you go hour by hour by hour, I'm gonna do this thing, this thing, this thing. And that works great for some people. Just if you do that, do plan in break times effectively and appropriately. My sister used to love to do that. She had everything scheduled in college, right down to gonna call mom from like five to 6 p.m. and then she'd get right off the phone. It was pretty amazing. I go most of the time can't do that. I can do that if I have a single day and I know exactly where I'm at, but I don't usually get too many days in advance. My plan is usually a priorities list of things I have to do. But if I have that plan in front of me, anytime I have a work here, I know do this thing, then do this thing, then do this thing. Either way, taking the five minutes to say, what are the most important things to get done right now is key and everyone will tell you that. Also, that list shouldn't be too, too long, but you're a college student. That whole CEO concept of only three things on your list ain't going to cut it, and I know it. But do try to keep the key items to like five to seven at most, and each of them shouldn't be too long. That will help you. The next thing is, is that when you're making that plan, those things shouldn't be tasks. They should be actions. You should have a very clear sense of what that item is is and how you accomplish it. So for a college type setting, the kind of actions that would go on your plan for the day would be, well, you might start with something like study for history, but that's not really an action because study is a very difficult concept. So you want to really go back and say, make flashcards for chapter three in history or go over flashcards for chapter five in history. If you're studying for biology, you might want to say, go over terms from the last thing that we did. You might want to give it something very specific. Take a practice test. Make sure those are actions. Even the same with reading. Reading is a tough action, especially if it's a long segment. Make sure your action is something like read chapter two or better yet, read for 20 minutes kind of thing. So you know where you're at, you know how to do it. Also check out my tips for reading strategies and what to do with that because that will also help you out. But actions are key, especially if you're doing paper writing, any of those things. Make sure you know what the next physical item is, not a big thing. I'll tell you, my information for today when I'm prepping online classes included things like grade current information. I can go right to a spot and do that. Email people missing assignments. That is very specific. Send general email. That is very specific. All of those are single things I can do. If I'm doing tasks for committees, it might be look up this thing. It might be complete this document. If I'm working on classes for prep, it might be work on mitosis lab to-do list, create mitosis lab assessment. These are very clear actions and I can follow them. Next, you wanna pick actions that do work well with your energy based on where you're at in the day and how you function. And so there's two things I think with energy that are important. One is when do you do well? 
a lot of people do well in the morning. Some people do well in the evening. Mid-afternoon is a pretty bad time for most people, but you might be that person. I don't know. The times where you do things well, put the hard things that take the thinking, because that's where they should go. Honestly, getting some of those out of the way in the morning before you move on to like random things is really useful. It just depends on when your morning is. The other thing that's important for energy management is how do you manage your energy well? How do you do things effectively? If you know you need to be in a quiet space to accomplish something and you can only be in that quiet space at a different time of day, put that item in that time of space. If you know you can only do things for shorter periods of time, that's energy management too. It's knowing that you want to put a like 30 minute block on something Whereas somebody else might want to put a 90 minute block on something. And honestly, you don't want to get much beyond 90 to hundred minutes for most people. And that's key is doing those times, pick a time block to do something in. If it's an action that you are just not even sure you're going to be able to manage for any length of time, put it for like five minutes in like a 20 minute open space. Cause then if you want to, you could keep going, but if you get that five minutes and you have accomplished it, you can check it off your list. So the next key is when you're dealing with these single shot actions, do nothing but the action for the period of time you're supposed to do it, which is one of the keys to keeping it small because you want to stay on one task. If you have to move from task to task to task to task, your brain's got to do a lot of things. My brain has ADHD. It gets real confused going from place to place. I need to take each single task one at a time and shut other things out. I can't shut them out forever. I can't shut out anything for 20 minutes. Nobody needs me for 20 minutes and I can work on something. And the same goes for you. Nobody needs you for 20 minutes most of the time. If you're a parent of a child, you might wanna have something on the side speaker. But other than that, keep that stuff out of the way. And one of my favorite guys right now, Alan Brown of Crusher TV says, anything else that comes up while you're doing that thing is BS you're not doing right now. It might even be important, but it is important BS you're not doing right now. Other than life or death situations, you can put 20 to 30 minutes into something and block everything else out. I strongly advise it. But Another note from another guy, I love Eric Tivers, ADHD Rewired, is if those things come up in your brain, the BS you're not doing right now, instead of letting it click, write it down somewhere and move it. So I will take 30 seconds when I'm in the middle of something, I'm in the middle of putting together an assignment for class and suddenly my brain is like, oh man, you need to send that email to something for church. I'll just write it down on a side sheet and get back to it when my time is up. And I have my list when my time is up of things I got to deal with. And I have a block of time for things I got to deal with, but they don't take up that time. My brain jumps to them. They get written down and pushed to the side. And I really strongly recommend that. Like I said, if you're doing a single item, maybe you're not sure about the single tasking, multitasking thing. Alan Brown introduced me to a neat thing that I want to show you because I think you'll get the hang of it, or at least you can test it out yourself. This is the difference between single tasking and multitasking. So for instance, if I was to ask you to write numbers, like one, two, three letters, like A, B, C, and shapes like square, triangle, circle, in this case, we're just gonna keep repeating those. What would take you less time. Would it take you less time to go straight down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to make the numbers. Then go straight down A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Take me a little longer because I gotta do it with the mouse. And then straight down, square, triangle, circle, square, triangle, circle. Or would it be faster to go one, A, square, two, B, triangle, three, C, circle. Honestly, you should give it a try. Do each one for up to 26, that's how many letters there are in the alphabet, which over here would be, let's see, there's three of those little things. So like eight sets of them, but you could figure it out. Either way, time yourself doing each one 
straight down and then time yourself doing it across, you'll see a difference. I pretty much guarantee it. There are very few brains that can really put this together. And I'll tell you, I am as close to a multitasking kind of brain as you get because my brain needs to have this much going on at all times. If there's this much going on, it tries to fill this space. But that's one of the reasons that I get very focused on actions because I can take an action and fill this much space and get it done twice as fast as I thought I could and then be done with it and move to the next action and it helps. And if you are that kind of person like me, pro tip, speed up all of your videos because the faster the words get into your brain, the faster your brain follows it. Now, if you need to pause to take notes, I still advise that. But let me tell you, my brain wanders way less when the video is going like 1.5 or 1.75, other than when I'm trying to fill that empty space in between people talking. People talk really slow. I'm trying to so you can follow me, but if, you're, if you have that kind of brain, that's my, my sneaky, neat me tip on that. But then you also get through that video twice as fast and you've completed an action and you move on to your next action. All right. My last thing with the single tasking, especially for college stuff is do single task actions, but do switch them up between classes. It will keep your brain going. If you'd like to do a single task math action, like do math problems for 20 minutes, but then read something else for 20 minutes, because for most of us, that's about the length of time we can stay focused on a single item. But if you take those focus blocks and it will feel weird when you do it, that actually helps it stick later. Finally, procrastination, which is not getting these things done. The real key to procrastination, and this comes up in, again, all the same places I've talked about, is your brain doesn't want to do something because it's afraid of something. Most of the time, procrastination was a fear of getting injured. You'd procrastinate going into that dark cave because something might come out and eat you, right? That makes sense. But I don't procrastinate doing schoolwork because something might come out and eat me, but I might be nervous about getting it done or how it feels or how boring it's going to be to my brain. This is another Eric Tibbers one, is just, just knowing that, being able to say, I'm not sure I'm gonna understand this can help you get past procrastination. I think this is gonna be boring, can get you past procrastination, because then you're like, oh, I know why my brain is stopping me, and I'm gonna tell it to shove it and do it anyway. That's Eric Tivers, TM, I think. So those are all of my keys to basic time energy management, and I think later on I'll make another video on time and energy management for a brain that won't shut up because I got one of those. But I'm going to end this one here. Hope that was useful to you.